Okay, so at this point, you already know how to, let's say, identify some errors, how to get some clues, normally how to use the stack, the report that you have, even how to check the Laravel log for additional details or basically the same details in a different, of course, context. So what we are going to do during this class is to try to, let's say, research about the cause of the error because sometimes it is not so obvious and we don't know what is exactly causing an issue. So let's go back to our main controller in app HTTP controllers, that is main controller. And let's say that we are not passing the name of the view directly, but we are using a variable. So this is view name. And then view name is going to be something dynamic based on the environment file. Let's say something like amp app name. Remember, we normally should not be using this because sometimes it is going to return null and sometimes it is going to return the app name depending if we have the catch enabled or not. So for now, if we go to our project and refresh here, it is going to fail because it is trying to locate a view called learn level. So it is especially saying us what is the cause of the error. But let's imagine that we are going to, for now, create or start the catch of the configuration. So we use php artisan config catch, and there you have. So remember, this is going to return null now. So if we go back and refresh, we are getting exactly the same result. And this is because currently our php artisan serve is not, let's say, aware of the latest changes. So let's go to stop the process with Ctrl or Command C and start it again to get the latest configuration and in fact, the latest catch. So if we refresh, there you have view empty, not found. So at this point, we are just creating random errors. But how can we, let's say, imagine that we don't know exactly why it is getting empty, why it is getting null. There are different ways to debug our code, but Laravel provides us two very important helpers. Yes, again, we have helpers, those global available functions that we can get here, and those are dump, and the other is called dd, coming from dump and die. Yes, there are basically the same, but the difference between dump and dd is that dd after dumping the data is going to stop, is going to die and eventually stop completely the execution of our framework, of our request and the response. So let's try to use this one, same with that 111, and this is a 222. So if we go here and refresh, we are going to get the information about those values. As you can see here, Currently, we don't have a view because it immediately stopped the execution. If I remove the DD with a comment, so we can refresh and we can get only the information that we have here in the view because dump is not showing it now. Don't worry. Of course, there is usually a way to stop this using, of course, exit if you prefer. But as you can see, DD is just a shortcut to doing that. So you can dump the information if you prefer to show something, or even you can use pass several parameters to the DD function and of course the same for the dump. So let's just stick with this because this is going to allow us to stop the execution there. But taking care that there is some cases where you don't want to stop the execution, show the information you want to dump. Let's imagine, for example, inside a loop, so you dump, 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 and there you stop the execution with something say, end. Whatever that you need. There are different techniques to, of course, obtain information. If you check here, we are going to get one, one, one several times. And finally, we stop the execution here. Normally, when you want to debug inside a for each or a loop, any kind of loop, you normally want to use dump because you don't want to stop immediately the loop on the first iteration. So now that we know this, let's to use this with a very advantage, which is using variables. We can basically pass here view name, and we are going to get the value of this. Of course, you can even pass another value. Let's say, for example, you don't know what it is returning. So you are passing this as well. 
You can even pass objects or results of complex operations. And this is going to show you all the details. Don't worry, we are going to, in fact, use DD across the course to the book and verify how the information is changing, how the information is returning some data that we want to use. So we are going to be very close friends of DD as well as we did for PHP Artisan and Tinker. So if we go back here and refresh, we are checking how we are getting null in both positions. So at this point, we know, oh, okay, view name is getting empty because it is in fact null. We know this is because of the configuration catch. So we probably can research, go online, go to Stack Overflow, the Laravel documentation and realize that the AMP helper is going to return a null value when we have the catch. So we realize something that I already advised to you, which is using config instead of AMP. And of course, we need to go to the app file and to the name position. So once we have this, we can check, of course, the differences here. We are debugging. So we can pass a new position. And if we go and refresh, we have learn Laravel, which is the value of the variable, null, which is the returned value by the AMP helper, and finally the returned value by the config helper. So at this point, you are capable to determine the cause of the error, stopping the execution, and being sure what is exactly the values of your variables the values returned by some calls and similar. So at this point, you know how to debug using DD or using dump. And eventually, as you may remember, we can even use PHP Artisan Tinker to check our code. We can go directly and verify what is, for example, the result of executing config app name. So if we go exactly there in Tinker, of course, we can paste that code and be sure it is returning a little label or something that we need. There are a lot of possible values that you can use, of course, to determine how is your call resulting and what is it is returning. So here we can use app name or something like that. To be sure what it is returning, you can see it is failing, returning null. Once again, we can just remove the config catch. So we just need to use config clear. And now we can stop our PHP artisan serve again because we are changing the configuration. So we need to load the latest configuration again. And once I return here, you can see, of course, how it is changing. So using DD and using dump is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to allow you to determine how the variables, how the execution flow is behaving, and you can verify everything that you need. If at some point you have any doubt about the value or the structure or something, you can just go and debug with this. So that's all. Let's to leave our code as it is before to start the class because we don't want any error in the following classes. So let's go to return. We are done here. And there we are. So of course, at this point, our code is going to be working as well. And remember, let's to be sure that we removed, of course, the config catch at this point. See you in the following class to start creating and learning some new structures of Laravel.